This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Fill in the blank, we hardly knew you. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Indy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. As the new fall TV season approaches, we're hearing of a change on one of the sitcoms, Kevin Can Wait. The hot wife to James's dumpy husband, played by Aaron Hayes, is not returning to the series. And the network decided to write her out by killing the character. Yes. And this got us thinking about other shows where a character or an actor died during production. Mm -hmm. Now we're excluding soap operas and their modern... Daytime and evening. Yeah, and their modern cousins, the genre series. Yes. (laughs) Sci-fi, fantasy, superhero, horror, because killing characters are pretty much their bread and butter. Yeah. We're also skipping characters that just disappeared, looking at you, Chuck Cunningham, or where the actor changed, but the character remained, a.k.a. the Darren Effect. Mm -hmm. In 1962, during the third season of Dennis the Menace, Mr. Wilson, Joseph Kearns, passed away. Gail Gordon was brought in as his brother to end the season out, and then he was just referred to as Mr. Wilson for the rest of the series, with no mention of him actually being a different character. Hmm. It's a kid show. They you know, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> nobody noticed. Yeah. In 1963, Larry Keating of Mr. Ed passed, and his character, the neighbor, was replaced without explanation. In 1966, Alice Pierce, Mrs. Kravitz of Bewitched, passed, and her sister-in-law took over, played by Mary Grace Canfield, with the explanation that Kravitz was off seeing her mother. And the next season, Sandra Gould was brought in and became Mrs. Kravitz again. Okay, so she they didn't even say <laughs> again, it's a new neighbor or anything. Just, just like they did with Darren. Yeah. <laughs> Another bewitched switch was due to the death of Aunt Clara, who was played by Marion Lorne. She was replaced by Alice Ghostly as Esmeralda, but basically the same role. Yeah. Petticoat Junction had an older cast, which caused havoc over the seasons. Smiley Burnett played Charlie Pratt, the train engineer, who passed away. He was replaced by Ruth Davis as Floyd Smoot, who then he died, and he was replaced by Byron Folger as Wendell Gibbs. Which makes for some really interesting things. There was one Christmas episode that they just basically redid in mm-hmm. a later year. Yes, they went for, it was the black and white, and they did it again in color. Color. And when they did it the first time, they had those two engineers. And when they did it the second time, it was the other two engineers. It was the same script, though. Same script. The star of the show, B. Benaderet, died in 1968, although she mostly disappeared earlier that year, and they referred to her as being out of town. And then when she died, they only indirectly reference her death. There's a Kate Bradley memorial suite at the Shady Rest. Mm Mm-hmm. June Lockhart moved into a similar role of the mother-type figure Mm -hmm. as Dr. Janet Craig. Dan Blocker, who played Haas on Bonanza, passed away, and they attempted to replace him with David Canary. Uh, It didn't really work. The show was canceled shortly after that. McLean Stevenson asked to be released from M.A.S.H., and they did so by having his character killed in a plane crash while finally going home. Freddie Prince got his big break on Chico and the Man, but died in 1977. At first, they said he was just away, and then a 12-year-old kid replaced his role on the show, and he was played by Gabriel Melgar. Diana Highland died after the first season of Eight is Enough, and a new character replaced her, played by Betty Buckley. Yeah, I thought that was very strange. I I actually was watching the series at that point in time, and... You know, keep in mind that was like before the internet, and mm-hmm. you maybe didn't know that these people died in real life. Right, and it was just like, and why is this somebody different? And suddenly they're not there, and now the dad who was just married is dating somebody else, and you know, yeah. it was just weird. Yeah. During the Waltons' uh, run, Will Gear, who played the grandfather, died, and the seventh season premiere addressed it in the plot. Jack Sue of Barney Miller passed in 1979, and an episode with the other characters. Speaking out of character addressed it. Yeah. Michael Conrad passed during the Hill Street Blues run with his character killed off while making love. So, like, off screen, oh, he's dead. John Eric Hexham killed himself while playing around with a gun with blanks. Mm-hmm. 
So his character on Cover Up was replaced. Nicholas Colasanto died during the Cheers run, and his role as bartender was replaced by Woody Harrelson. Uh, speaking of Cheers, Jay Thomas' character, Eddie LeBeck, was killed off after he made a snide remark about co-star Rhea Perlman on a radio show. Mm -hmm. And then two of the old bailiffs on Night Court, played by Selma Diamond and Florence Halop, passed during the show's run in succession. And then they went with 32-year-old Marcia Warfield to resolve the issue. That way, you know, she probably wouldn't die. Right. Now, Valerie is a very interesting example of this. The star, Valerie Harper, and her husband slash writer walked out trying to get a pay increase. Now, she had done this on Rhoda in 1975, and she did get a pay increase. Mm -hmm. The negotiations dragged on, and Brandon Tartikoff, head of NBC at the time, got tired of the whole thing. Meanwhile, NBC had just signed a deal with Sandy Duncan. Problem solved. They shot around Harper for a few episodes, and then Duncan arrived as an aunt who took over the family after Harper's character died in a car accident. The show couldn't be called Valerie, of course. No. Nope. <laughs> so it became Valerie's family, and then finally the Hogan family. It ran from 1987 to 1991 with Sandy Duncan, mm -hmm. including a switch from NBC to CBS. So that show went all over the place. Yes. Now, Red Fox passed during the run of the royal family, and Jack K. Harry was brought in to help out the family. Right. Uh, Phil Hartman was killed during the run of News Radio, and his friend John Lovitz took over a similar role for the final season. Mm -hmm. And then one that I was never fond of, Dan's character mm -hmm. on Roseanne left when John Goodman wanted to exit the series. It was revealed in the final episode that his character actually died and that the season was essentially a dream sequence. Yes. Which may or may not uh, apply when it comes back. Yeah. David Strickland of Suddenly Susan hung himself. The character just disappeared from the show with no explanation. Madeline Kahn of Cosby passed during its run. And that was the CBS Cosby, not the NBC Cosby show. And like Barney Miller, an episode was aired with the cast out of character giving her tribute. John Ritter passed during Eight Simple Rules, and his character was killed off in the same manner as he died with a heart condition. James Garner was brought on as a new character to replace him. And if you remember, that series was first called Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Daughter. Yes. And it went to Eight Simple Rules when he died. Yes. Because, you know, no longer his daughter. Right. In a similar manner, John Spencer and his character on the West Wing died of heart attacks. His running mate, Matt Santos, who was played by Jimmy Smits, went on to win the election. Cal Penn's character on House was killed off for good reason in 2009. He got a job at the real White House under Obama. In 2011, after Charlie Sheen's personal life imploded and he asked for a huge raise on Two and a Half Men, his character was killed by a train. He was run over by a train, but in the last episode, he somehow returned from death. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, the unseen Debbie Wallowitz on Big Bang Theory, which was the voice of Carol Ann Susie, passed when the actress did, and they had a tribute episode where the cast eats her dishes from the freezer. I thought that was a really good one. Mm -hmm. There are probably more examples of that. I can actually think of two right off the top of my head that I didn't remember until just now. Okay. Oh, you want one? Yeah, well, why not? Um, on Seinfeld, the Susan episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah, died from the... Uh, licking the, the envelopes. Licking and the... Apparently, there was, um, at, at the time, there was some issue that maybe she didn't get along well with the rest of the cast oh, or something, but okay. then they later, Jason Alexander later came out and said, no, no, that wasn't the case, but, um, so that, that was one where they just killed off the character to get rid of the actor, yep, you know? Yep, yep. So, if you think of any, you can always let us know, and you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. If Mark's killed off, I won't replace him. <laughs>